Here's a familiar story about a challenge that affects millions of people and how you can join alongside other youth like you to change it. This is a school. Most of us have spent a lot of time in a place like this. Working hard to stay inspired, connect with new ideas and people, learn important stuff, and have fun. Chances are, you have at least some technology at your school, so this story will probably sound familiar. Great learning happens when technology works. So here, Leroy is doing research online in the library, working on a report about Rosa Parks. A history class is using 3D modeling software to recreate ancient wonders of the world. In two different rooms, English students are collaborating on responses to questions about a recent book they read over Google Docs. And these guys are working on a smart board to edit pictures they took on a field trip in an application to help see math concepts in our everyday world. Turns out, this bridge has a lot to do with geometry. This is all great learning. But wait, what's this? Epic, Epic fail? fail? The internet connection just went down in the library, so everyone working there had to stop. Our English students are getting an error message and can't print their paper anymore, so they're stuck. And the math teacher just opened up an email virus, and now his smart board is completely frozen. So what happens? Here comes the technician. The lucky schools have one. This is the person who makes sure all this technology that we depend on runs smoothly, so your school can run smoothly, so your learning is as well wired as the world around you. The technician is on her way to fix the internet. But meanwhile, the printers are still causing problems. And that virus has made our smart board, well, just a board. It's going to take some time to do all those things. And meanwhile, learning, ideas, our work can't wait. Before our technician even reaches the library, four more requests have come in. The technician is swamped. It seems like everything. Rosa Parks, the ancient wonders, the wonders of math, are all relying on this one person. Too many schools, probably yours too, can't keep up. But why? What if youth had more power to make great learning happen? Here's Eric, a student exploring the geometry of bridges in one of those classes. Eric's removed about a million viruses from his own computer at home and thinks he can help get the smart board back up. And Maddie, she can troubleshoot printer problems in her sleep. Looks like printers in the English class were just offline. Problem solved. And here's you, with a bunch of friends after school. You just learned how to reboot the router to get that internet back up in the library for Leroy. Turns out, maybe our tech coordinator could have been doing other things, like teaching a class of her own on programming languages. Now, what if we multiplied you, or Eric, or Maddie by 10? And now, for a moment, imagine that there are teams of young people like this one or even libraries and community centers that face this challenge all over the country. Imagine joining a network of people like you all across the country who are making this challenge into an opportunity. We call these teams mouse squads, and hundreds already exist across the country. Young people, maybe like you, with a knack for technology, an interest in helping others, and a shared vision for what learning can be when technology works. With the help of their mouse squad coordinator, our tech specialist might be good for this job. Mouse squad students mobilize to first learn how technology works and then practice their skills by